Hello everybody, my name is Jack Powell. Welcome to Serve Stories. This is a series where we here at The Life uh, bring in a member from our ministry or the church at large uh, and just talk to them about their experience on mission uh, and making the name of Jesus known, not only here in North Portland, Alabama, but over the entire world. Today we have Natalie Shirley. Uh, hey, Nat. Hey, Jack. Who has been on several mission trips with our church to uh, Haiti. Nat, how you doing? You all right? Doing good. Question one for you. Tell me about Haiti and the work you did over there, everything you can. All right. Uh, so I went to Haiti um, in December of 2018. Um, and I got the chance to uh, go do a lot of VBSs um, in different villages. So uh, we went to probably two or three villages um, and were able to minister um, to those kids. And also we were able um, to feed them a hot meal every day, uh, which is definitely a huge treat for them um, because they live off of, uh, many of them live off of less than $2 a day. Um, so that was such a blessing to have the resources to be able to do that. Um, so we got to visit um, just a lot of the town, a lot of the different villages. Uh, we met a lot of people, um, and each day we did a VBS um, at a different place. Uh, so that was our main focus, um, and just blessing the children, uh, blessing their family. And then we also got the chance um, to do some medical missions. Um, that is definitely uh, something that lacks there. Um, and so we were able uh, to treat these patients with things from minor uh, injuries to major things. So that was a, uh, just a big blessing to get to see um, the joy on their faces when they got something uh, that we definitely have so easy here in America. Awesome. Question number two, you've, uh, you've served here stateside several times, uh, whether it be through Mission Serve or through um, other avenues. Were there any differences between the, the trips here stateside and the uh, international trip to Haiti? Were there any differences between those two? Um, absolutely. So in Haiti, um, a lot of what we did is huge construction, um, a lot of just building places for them to be able to live, um, and not even nice places, uh, just places that are able for them um, just to have an opportunity uh, to live safely and so a lot of the difference um, here is just a lot of the needs that we find stateside um, are so minor compared uh, to the ones we have in Haiti. Uh, many times these these kids you know they might eat every three to four days um, they might eat once a week um, so getting the opportunity just to give them a meal which we completely take for granted uh, was such a blessing and then also um, getting to just build um, houses you know which are definitely so minor very much uh, might have one room um, made out of you know brick dirt you know very 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 minor um, and so the main difference is just a lot of the things um, that we do in Haiti um, are things that we definitely take for granted here um, stateside and so getting to experience also um, just the joy of the children in Haiti um, is much different with them having such such less uh, than us uh, getting to see their joy getting to see their smiles um, is something that we often don't see um, always here stateside. Awesome, good stuff. So question number three, uh, I think you guys would agree we're a very mission-minded church in NBC. Would y'all kind of yeah, agree with that? Um, that said, being in a mission-minded church that we are, uh, what are some of the things we've talked about, whether here in the college services or in the main services, that you saw in action while in Haiti? How did you see some of those things come to life? Uh, so many times, you know, I think we hear uh, this is huge in our college ministry and also uh, from Pastor John, um, but just having having a joyful heart um, no matter the circumstance um, and definitely as your own mission being joyful um, and remembering your calling, but also just as we go throughout our daily life uh, being joyful. And in Haiti, that is something um, that I saw so vividly that was so apparent to me um, is the joy that is in their hearts um, and, you know, how much more do I have than them? Um, yet they just, they embody what it is to have a joyful spirit um, and a joyful heart. Um, and also just being intentional. Um, I feel like in Haiti, I really I got the opportunity to be intentional with these people, um, really got to know their heart, really got to see, um, you know, what what they loved, what they stood for. Um, and so that was just an awesome, um, awesome experience just to really see those things come to life. Um, you know, having an intentional heart when I went down there, um, which is something that we should have everywhere we go. Um, but I feel like going to Haiti was really an opportunity for me to see um, how intentional I can be. Um, but how it really, uh, that has to come from within. And that is something that I have to pray for um, each day is to have an intentional heart um, and to not let uh, the distractions of the world uh, bombard my mind and bom bombard my heart. Um, and so really, um, if there's one thing that I really saw in action, it was um, having a joyful heart no matter the circumstance um, and understanding that the Lord is greater than all of those um, circumstances. We hear that the Lord is all we need, um, that the Lord is who we can stand upon. And those are so true. And while in Haiti, um, you know, sometimes I think that um, they they really get it. They understand 
um, that less is more. You know, we might have more in possessions. Um, they might have uh, less in possessions, but their heart and their, uh, their joy for the Lord is much more than we have here. Uh, speaking of, you know, being intentional, and I know there have got to be way too many to talk about, but um, what are some of the ways that you saw God move while in Haiti specifically? Um, so we got the opportunity uh, to do VBS, like I said, and so uh, getting to um, getting to get to know the translators, uh, getting to know the people, uh, getting to share the gospel with them was such uh, such a blessing because you know to them that is everything, and to them that is uh, what changes their life forever. And while that changes our life here, you know them that gives them um, an eternal hope that gives them something to look forward to one day. Um, because if they know Jesus, then this is the worst thing they will ever see. Um, they might not have a ton here on earth here in Haiti, uh, but they have greater things in store. Um, and so getting to see uh, the Lord move just through uh, through sharing his gospel was such a blessing. You know, getting to see um, kids, you know, with tears in their eyes and getting to help uh, help treat patients um, with things so minor. Uh, there was uh, there were many ladies um, who had health issues, um, who had things that had been lasting for many, many years. Um, and so with uh, the doctor that was there with us, um, him just treating that, that was such, uh, it was so moving for us to see um, the things we take for granted and also uh, things that can change our life forever. Something so simple here uh, really impacts them in the years to come, you know, gives them an opportunity to work, gives them an opportunity um, to continue on mission and continue where they're called to. Um, and then just lastly, uh, you know, by giving them a meal, uh, that is something that seems so simple, uh, but getting that, uh, they were, they were just moved and they were so touched, um, that we would ever think to do that. Um, and so the Lord moved in so many ways, um, and ways that, you know, like I've said so many times we take for granted, um, but really just getting to share the gospel with them and, you know, seeing their faces light up, uh, seeing lives changed and, you know, seeing them have, have an eternal hope, um, that we, that many of us have had for so long and we take for granted. Uh, that was definitely encouraging to me just to, uh, see their spirit and to see how on fire they were, um, even at such a young age and even with, um, even when the circumstances that they live in. Now, I know there have got to be a lot of these, uh, too, but what's one of the best stories from your, from your time there? Like, again, I know there are way too many to count, but you had to pick one. What's like the best story? By the way, side note, mission trips are fun. Go on. And now I was about to tell us why. Mission trips are great. Go on one. No, go ahead. Um, probably one of my favorite stories, um, it's just, it's not necessarily a story, but it's just um, an instance. And so uh, on the last day of VBS, uh, we were able uh, to have, we got extra time. Um, and so that was such a blessing, not knowing if we were going to get to go to the village that day, not knowing uh, what the circumstances look like, kind of going day by day. And um, on the last day, um, we got to uh, spend more time with the children in worship. Um, and like I said, the translators helped us lead worship. Um, and so our worship was supposed to last uh, probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and, you know, as we continue to go, we're about to give our lesson and everything. And um, before we know it, you know, worship has turned into an hour. Um, and it felt like it felt like five minutes. Um, it, it felt so uh, felt so fast. And, you know, before you knew it, it was an hour. And so really uh, probably just, you know, it's hard to put into words not being there. Uh, but just getting to experience um, the presence of the Holy Spirit that was in that room. Uh, that was, you know, with with kids ranging from two to 14, uh, getting to experience uh, the worship with them, getting to see them raising their hands, lifting their hands. Uh, to me, that was such a blessing and something that just sticks out in my head. Um, and then also getting to hear um, stories of healing. You know, that was something uh, that they are very, very, um, they're very, very set on. They love to share their stories. Um, and so one of my favorite stories was just, uh, getting to hear, uh, their testimonies. Uh, one lady in particular, um, she's a cook, um, and she, uh, she had been burned within a riot, um, that out on the main street, you know, going to get food. And, you know, she comes back and she talks about, uh, just people getting to, um, people gathering together, people praying for her. Um, and, you know, that burn that was potentially deadly, you know, then she's walking, she's moving. Um, and it's healed perfectly, healed better than everything. Um, so really just 
you know, one specific story couldn't tell it all. Um, but really just the, the thing that sticks out of my head the most um, is just getting to be a part of the worship, getting to uh, see their hearts, getting to see uh, how intentional they are with each other. Uh, that was definitely a huge blessing. That's awesome. Um, something that's really awesome about mission trips is that when you're there, obviously God is working through you. He's working uh, through you and your team to reach the lives of the people there. But when you get back, you realize that he has also done a work in you and done a work in your life. So Natalie, what are some of the ways that once you got back from Haiti, that he did a work in your life? Uh, yeah, so one of the main um, ways that the Lord has continued to work in my life, uh, and you know, to this day I'm reminded of it weekly, um, and even daily sometimes, is um, just to, to be present um, and to be joyful within the present. Um, I think many times you know, we can all get distracted. We can all get, um, you know, we can just get bombarded by the ways of the world. And that is so common. Um, but really something that, that I learned was uh, to be intentional where the Lord has placed us. And whether that is, you know, within our classes at school, uh, whether that is on mission, whether that's at church, um, it's remaining um, to have an intentional heart. Uh, because I think many times before I went to Haiti, you know, I, I desired to be intentional, um, but I didn't always um, I didn't really see the full purpose of it. And when I came back from Haiti, um, I really got to experience, uh, you know, the Lord blesses that intentionality. Um, and, and, I, and I have been able to see that um, within my classes, within my school. Um, and so that is, a, that is a daily reminder I have to have. Um, and then also uh, having just a joyful heart no matter where we go. You know, I think we hear that many times. Uh, but when you experience um, a place like Haiti, you experience a place that you know, it's full of civil unrest. It's full of um, a corrupt government. It's full of people who live off of, you know, less than $2 a day. Um, you really come back and you really, you count yourself um, as lucky and you count your, you count your blessings um, time and time again because you realize just how lucky we are, we are as a people here in America. So, you know, when days seem rough, um, sometimes I think back to Haiti and I think back um, to their daily struggles and the things they go to. And I'm just reminded um, you know, that the Lord is, uh, the Lord is a gracious God and he is a good God. Um, but he has placed, he has placed blessings in each of our lives and, you know, and it's our, um, it's the way we see things. It's our viewpoint on life. And so coming back from Haiti, um, I've really tried to be intentional on finding the joy in every situation, even if it's not necessarily a joyful situation, um, but understanding that the Lord can use it for good. Um, and so, you know, I think about Haiti all the time. I learned so many lessons there, too many too many to count, uh, but really just being intentional, having a joyful heart, um, and how important uh, prayer is, how uh, how that is the work. You know, many, many times in Haiti, they speak of prayer uh, because that is their only hope. You know, they pray so that they get their food um, the next day. They pray uh, for, for safety, for health. They pray for everything um, because they do not have the resources we have. Um, and so, you know, coming back, I really uh, began to get specific in my prayers. Um, I learned that God is a specific God, um, and that He wants to hear our heart, and that He wants to know, uh, He wants to know, you know, to the depths of our soul, uh, what we want, and what um, just the desires of our heart. And so, I really, I love Haiti. It's a very special place. Um, like I said, the lessons could go on, um, but moving forward, uh, I would definitely challenge everybody: uh, just be intentional, have a joyful heart. Um, and look to the blessings that the Lord has given us each and every day uh, because there are many people um, who have far less than we do, um, but their joy is so much greater. Uh, so really, day in and day out, um, it's, you know, finding joy in every situation. Um, that is probably one of my greatest takeaways of all time. Natalie, thank you so much for telling us about your time in Haiti. Thank you for uh, just telling us the way that the Lord's worked in your life. And thank you guys for joining us for this first episode. Since it's summertime and since all the coronavirus stuff has gone down, we you know, mission trips were canceled. There's not any happening this summer. Um, so I figured now would be a good time to tell the stories from these past years and see how God has worked before so we can be expected to do it again because He will do it again. Um, join us, I think, every other week. Join us every other week for uh, uh, the next episode of Surf Stories. Thank you guys so much and see you all soon. Bye. Thanks, Jack. Now.